Hey, what's going on guys? It is Rob showing you guys what I watched. Now, let's get started here. Uh, there's a mix of like horror and some sci-fi and uh, even thriller. So I watched The Shallows. Um, I have to say this is one of the best shark movies in the past like 10 years. Uh, they did a really good job with making this a survival film because that's what it is. Uh, the shark is basically circling Blake Lively. You know, she's injured. She's stuck on this rock and she's trying to get off and get to shore. But the shark just keeps messing with her. And so she tries to find a way to trick the shark and try to work out a plan to, to make it to shore. Um, there are plenty of death scenes in this and the shark just looks really, really good. I was just so surprised on how they did it. But Blake Lively uh, did a good job in, you know, there are other characters in the movie, but it just mainly focuses on her, you know, and her survival. So, um, a really good shark movie, guys. I saw this in a theater, actually, and I was really, really surprised by it. So, that's the first one, Arachnophobia. Now, Jaws made me afraid of sharks. This movie made me afraid of spiders. And I saw this movie at a very young age, and it's definitely one of my favorite Jeff Daniel films. Um, you know, basically, like, the spider comes back from the, the Amazon and bites this one guy. He dies, and they find out that the spider's breeding and in this small town, and the little spiders are, are just as deadly. Like, one bite from them, and you're, you're pretty much dead. And so Jeff Daniels basically has to figure out a way to find the hive and you know where where the mother spider or the the queen so to say is is nesting and um it's really really good it's really intense i love the music i love john goodman's appearance in this um just fantastic i watched the original witches uh this is a movie that still holds up today and, um, again, I saw this at a very young age, and I still think it's creepy. Some of the, the, the painting thing, um, you know, when the witches first take off, like, their wigs and, and stuff like that. You see the Grand High Witch and all that. Just a really, really cool movie. And it makes the remake look stupid. <laughs> the remake really looks stupid after watching this. This is the Warner Brothers Archive Collection Blu-ray. Which is really cool if you guys can get your hands on it. Definitely, uh, definitely get it. Because um, I had the DVD for the longest time. But, anyway. The next one is a movie that I wanted to revisit because I haven't seen it in years. And it is Species with Natasha Henstridge. Uh, you also have Michael Madsen in here. Alfred Molina, you know, Dr. Octopus himself. You got Forrest Whitaker, Ben Kingsley. A really good cast in this. It's about this girl who is kind of like an alien species that basically has sex with men because she wants to, um, you know, she wants to give birth to a child that's obviously going to be kind of a hybrid, so to say. And that's all she wants to do. That's basically her purpose, and they try to stop her. Um, definitely the best one out of this species movies. I mean, the species movies are just kind of like, eh. This one, I still feel like this one's good. Um, I wouldn't say it's great, but it's, it's, it's good. I still think it holds up a little bit. Now, this one is a Flix Mix DVD that has a compilation of different scenes from all the best horror films. Boogeyman, the killer compilation DVD. Now, this is a really cool DVD, guys. If you guys can get your hands on this, definitely do so. Um, this is, you know, when this came out, I grabbed it, and I still have it to this day. It's, it's still cool. It's over three hours of stuff on here. But basically, you have, uh, some really good scenes from popular horror movies, like Friday the 13th, Hellraiser, uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, The Dentist, all that stuff. A compilation of scenes, and, and it talks about each of the killers, and a lot of them are shown here. But... There's also a really cool, um, what is it called, the Legends of the Boogeyman character bios and histories. That is a really cool thing on this where it shows you, you know, the history of these horror characters and like where they came from. 
things like that. Just really, really awesome. Um, I haven't seen this in years, and it was cool to revisit it. So definitely get your hands on this cocoon. Uh, this also has a good cast in it. You have Jessica Tandy, you know, from The Birds and Driving Miss Daisy. Um, you got Steve Gutenberg. You have uh, Jack Cliff or Guilford, sorry, Jack Guilford, Brian Dennehy. Um, music by James Horner. A really, really good film, and um, it, it has a lot of heart, and uh, it's kind of emotional at times. But uh, you know, basically, there's these um, these older folks who kind of lost their edge and will to live. Kind of, they jump in this pool. And at the bottom of the pool, there's like these, these uh, cocoons, like big, huge eggs. And when they're swimming in the pool, all of a sudden they feel like they're young again. They feel like they can do stuff and like dance and like jump around and things like that, these older people. And, you know, Wilford Brimley's in this, and he's, you know, even at this time, he was old. Um, I think this, I don't remember when this was, 85, 1985, and Wilford Brimley still looked like he was an old, old man. Um, but they start to feel young, and it turns out, like, Brian Dennehy and, and, and some of these other people, they came to Earth to find these cocoons and take them back with them. So, just very interesting movie, um, and the ending is really good, too. Uh, there's also a sequel, but, um, yeah, the first one is definitely, definitely good. The Intruder with, uh, what's his name, Michael Ailey and Dennis Quaid. Uh, about this couple that moves into this house and the owner of the house basically doesn't want to leave I mean he does end up leaving but he just can't accept them like changing things he wants things to stick you know to stay the same way and stuff like that and he kind of gets involved with their lives even though he shouldn't you know like if you sell the property to somebody you should have it you know go away it's not it's not yours anymore you have nothing to do with it uh, but he just keeps, like, Dennis Quaid is kind of, like, creepy. Like, he, like, stalks them and shows up like he's trying to be their friend only because he's got a, he's kind of got a motive um, to stay in this house or at least be a part of the house still. He's just in love with the damn house. Um, but it's good. I, I really like it. Dennis Quaid is definitely the uh, shining light uh, in this film, so... The next one I watched, I needed to revisit it because the first time I watched it, I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. Midsommar, um, <clears throat> or Midsummer, whatever you want to say. I call it Midsommar, just the way it's spelled. But uh, it's from the director of uh, Hereditary. I, I don't know, I think this film's okay. I, I think it's okay. There's some really cool scenes and disturbing scenes in it, but all in all, I just think it's it's... It's just okay. I mean, there's there are things in it where I'm just like, you know, you could have just, you could have just left. You know, there, there, there are situations that happen in this where I'm just like, okay, you could have ignored that or you could have done something different. You could have done this and that. You know, you just think about that kind of stuff. But uh, it's it's kind of interesting to know, like, like whatever the folklore the, or the heritage or whatever is going on here, the culture. It's kind of... Um, interesting to see different takes on on how they perceive life and and, and and celebrate life and then like you know if they're against any kind of evil or something like that there, there's different uh there's just a different way of looking at sort of some of these things in this movie uh it, it's not everyone's cup of tea but you know whatever it's 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 okay i still think it, the movie is okay curve uh, basically about a woman who gets in a car accident and she's trapped upside down in her car and she can't get out so she basically has to survive and find a way to eat and, and you know um, stay warm and stuff while she's trapped and this guy comes along kind of messes with her and it becomes almost like a it's basically a thriller but it's, it's like a survival thriller in a way um, like this guy who makes an appearance it's like he's not even really the main focus until the third act because basically it's about her trying to survive in, in, in you know in, in her vehicle that's it um but yeah it's really good julian huff i mean i'm not like the biggest fan 
I guess, of her when it comes to movies. I mean, she's she was good in Safe Haven, but this is another one that I would say she's she's good and that you should check out is Curve. One of my favorite horror films of all time. And that is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I have this knife. It's a good knife. Um, what, can, what more can I say about the 1974 classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre? This is the Pioneer Special Edition DVD, by the way. Uh, I believe this is out of print and it's very hard to find. It's very expensive. I still have mine in very, very good shape. Um, I still love it. I love the whole grittiness, the way the, the film looks. You know, it's got spots and stuff uh, when you're watching it. Uh, it's just, it's so good, guys. This, this movie is weird enough and strange enough to just make, it just gets me excited uh, to see this, this weird family out in the middle of nowhere. That kind of reminds me of my aunt that lives out in the country who has a farmhouse. It looks just like her house. Like, honestly, you drive up, you're, you're just like, the only thing that's missing is the generator sound. But uh, you see the house, and I'm just like, I mean, that's, that's, that's Leatherface's house right there. Um, ah, there's just something about it, though. You know, these group of kids, they go uh, to, this, to this abandoned house, their family house, and they find out there's this other house that's behind that house, like in the distance, um, that is... Uh, you know, owned by this crazy family, and the guy who wields a chainsaw, and they start killing people one by one, and, uh, yeah, just really awesome. I mean, this is the birth of Leatherface right here. Don't ever watch that Leatherface movie, because that's not the birth of Leatherface. This is the birth of Leatherface, okay? He didn't get a chainsaw for his stupid birthday. That's not what happened, okay? Stay tuned for next week, because I'm going to, again, watch several different movies, and, uh, stay tuned. So, uh, give the video a like if you liked it. Subscribe for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next one.